Okay, aside from emissions and heat, the two big outputs of any engine are horsepower and torque. You know all about the first one. You've heard about it since you were a little kid. It's in every automotive advertisement. Everything the automakers ever talk about has horsepower in there somewhere. But torque is far less well understood, though extremely important. Let's break them down and define them first. Horsepower is a measure of work. Its definition makes that obvious. One horsepower is equal to 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. Now, torque is also a measure of work, but it describes work as twisting force. It's kind of like horsepower in a circle and without the per minute factor. Torque is measured in foot-pounds, not a certain number of them, though. For example, it may take 27 foot-pounds of torque to loosen a particular bolt on this engine, without regard for how long you have to apply that force. So at the risk of oversimplifying, horsepower expresses how much work you can get done in a certain amount of time. Torque is about how hard you can twist something. And that's key, because how does a car move itself? The engine turns, it twists the gears in the transmission, they twist output or drive shafts, and that moves the car. Torque really should be the star. Okay, seriously, let me show you on some charts how horsepower and torque work. I promise you won't fall asleep. Now, these are charts from cars that have been put on dynamometers, basically treadmills for cars. You've seen these. Our partners over at Edmonds do a lot of this kind of testing and gave us this data, and it's very instructive. Here's a 2011 Ford Mustang. Here's how the chart works. On the left, you've got your vertical axis of either foot-pounds of torque or amount of horsepower. Down across the right is basically your tachometer. It's RPMs from 1 to 8,000 in this case. Now look what happens. The torque line is this light blue one. You start building around 2,000 RPM, and you got more and more torque as you increase the revs. You peak right around here at about, oh, 4,200 with 365 foot-pounds. That's all that engine has. And you stay at about that range until around 5,200 RPM. This is the sweet spot. This is where you've got peak torque that just keeps coming. After a while, more RPMs, the torque begins to drop, horsepower keeps increasing. Let's look at another car. Here's a very different engine in a McLaren MP412C supercar. Here's our torque line again, builds gradually, and then notice at about 4,200 all the way out to about 6,200, this guy stays flat and right about at the peak amount of torque, around 415 foot-pounds. This is a wider, what they call fatter torque band. You've got more RPMs where you have full torque from the engine. Mercedes-Benz S63, instructive because this is a twin-turbo V8. Look what happens with turbos. This is the torque line. It's out of hand. It peaks really fast, and it stays broad, chunky, and 611 foot-pounds of torque. That's a lot, by the way, for a very long time before it begins to degrade. And finally, a very different car, a Scion FRS. Peaks here early at only 143 foot-pounds of torque, but then look what happens. You get this dip here. If you ever hear me driving a car and say, I feel like there's a flat spot in the torque curve, that's what I'm talking about. It's not flat at all. It's actually a dip where the car feels kind of gutless, and then up around 4,800 RPM, it kicks back in again and stays nice and flat all the way out to the mid-6,000s. Now, you may have noticed in all these charts, torque tends to peter out as you get to the higher RPMs up near your red line. That's because the engine is less able to breathe efficiently there. Secondly, notice that horsepower keeps climbing even after torque drops off. Why is that? It seems like it's two engines doing different things. Well, even as torque drops off, the RPMs keep climbing, and horsepower is largely a product of RPMs times torque. So we can put those two together and keep that horsepower line moving up because torque is dropping, but only modestly, as RPMs go up in a linear fashion. Okay, I hope you've got a better understanding now of horsepower, torque, the relationship, and how they impact the driving experience of a car. Also note, when we do our car videos, I'll show you those two numbers, and horsepower is usually the bigger, torque is often the smaller, unless that car has a turbo or a supercharger, which artificially puts more in the engine and allows the torque to come higher or as high as the horsepower. That gives you another clue as to what that car is going to be like to drive.